Okay, my worst date ever. I've had a lot. Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to my new bathroom setup. It's a little basic right now. I really only have like towels behind me. Anyway, today I'm gonna do a little get ready with me. I'm using all, mostly, products I've never used before. Some of them are new, some of them just new to me. And I'm also going to be answering anonymous questions. So you guys ready? Let's do this. So if you don't know about this, I actually saw James Walsh do this where you can like use this app to have people ask you anonymous questions, that's what it says. It kind of opens the door for people to ask real questions because you don't see who is asking these questions. So um, I decided this would be a little bit fun. Let's see if we get anything juicy. I am filming on my phone, so I can't read my phone. So Anna from my team is actually over here. Do you see that hand? She's gonna be reading me the questions, so. Yeah, let's do this. Question number one is, are you gonna have more kids? No, not from my body, at least. I'm not gonna have any more kids. I just don't think I can handle it anymore. If you don't know, I am 41 years old. I turned 41 recently, and I know that's not too old. I know that women are having babies in their 40s too, but for me, I was just, I realized I've got too much happening. I've got Naturium, I've got Mixed Makeup, I've got Glow Lab. If you guys don't know about that, it's my management arm of my company that I really don't run much of, my team really does. It's what our production company kind of moved into during the pandemic because production sort of stopped and I wanted my team to remain employed. So we created a whole new business model and I think it's been a really good one. So we've got so many things going on and then I have my babies and they're at a point where, you know, you think that like toddlers and infants and stuff, you think that they really require a lot of your attention, but really you just need to like keep them alive, make them laugh every once in a while, change their diapers, feed them, make sure they sleep and stuff. But kids, I'm realizing, just require so much more. They have so many emotions. They're going through so much change. So I just feel so tapped that the thought of having another baby right now doesn't seem realistic to me. Will I maybe adopt in the future or something like that? Have a surrogate? I don't know. I love me some babies, but maybe I'll just borrow other people's babies because the people around me are kind of in that mode right now where they're starting to have their babies. So maybe I'll just borrow babies instead. So I've got my hair pulled back. Normally I would be wearing like a headband or something, but I just combed my hair and I sort of want it to stay in place. I'm gonna try this. It's from Zit Sticka Pore Back Clearing Clay Mask. I wanna say this has BHAs in it and then different types of clays and everything. So I'm gonna put this on. I wouldn't normally, see I, have, I really have never opened this. I wouldn't normally start my morning routine. This is a morning skincare routine, by the way. I wouldn't normally start a routine with a clay mask, but since I'm answering questions, I felt like this would be a good time to try it out. And I really think that like prepping your skin for, especially if it's gonna be like, you know, like a day where you want your skin to look really flawless under your makeup and stuff, you might wanna use something like this. This is a foundation brush. I don't even know where I got it, but I just felt like using, I like applying with the brush. Oh, you know what? I don't wanna get close to my eye because of something else I'm using. How did you know your husband was the one? How did I know? My husband was the one. Hmm. There was just something about my husband that made me feel like I had known him forever. Like he, from day one, it was just like kindred spirits or something. But funny enough, like not kindred spirits, like so different, but it just felt like somebody I knew, like someone familiar. And I, you know, this is weird, but I do believe we have like weird soul like connections, maybe like past lives. I don't know, I don't know. I kind of want you guys to think that I'm, you know, like weird about these things, but I don't know. I do feel like soul connections and stuff are, are real and that feeling that you like have known somebody before is a big deal too, so I don't know. There are little things and there still are little things. Okay, I've got this clay mask on. It's not as thick as I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna be like putting a lot more not that thick. It's gotta go on for like 20 minutes. Okay, so I was gonna put these Dior Eye Reviver patches on just cause this is sitting for so long, but I forgot and I put the clay mask here. Do we think it would be a waste? They have niacinamide in them and other really nice ingredients. I'm just gonna do it cause it's gonna look good. These were sent to me through PR, but I actually wanted to buy them because they make you feel like a fancy bitch. And I, oh, these feel good too. Oh yeah. Oh, I know, I'm glad I'm doing this. I would pay for these, I'm telling you guys right now, because you know what? These are more for a vibe. Okay, my worst date 
ever. I've had a lot. You know, this isn't my worst day ever, but it's a funny story. When I was in my 20s, I was like pretty open-minded to like dating and like hooking up and all that. I had some fun in my 20s. I was on an airplane back to New York City. I don't even know what I, where I was coming from, but I had a layover in Minneapolis. When I was boarding the airplane, there was a guy standing behind me and I was like, ooh, he's handsome, he's cute. We caught each other's eye, but we didn't say anything to each other. So we got on the airplane. I went like way back in the back of the plane. I was in economy and it turns out he stopped like right away cause he was in first class. And I was like, well, well, that, there goes that. I decided to get up to go to the bathroom. And of course I didn't go to the bathroom that was like way back there, the back of the airplane. I went to the one that was like closer to the front because I was like, maybe? Cause I didn't know he had stopped in first class by the way. I thought like maybe he was just way up further and he seemed to notice. So he got up and we both met at the bathroom. This guy was like, hey, do you want a ride when we land? And I was like, oh, cause I was like, oh, is that a bad idea? Is this gonna be? like some, you know, news story later. He was like, I have a car, I have a driver and I can, you know, like take you into the city with me. And you know what? It was pricey. If you land at JFK or you land at Newark, it's like over a hundred dollars. So back then I was like, yes, okay, fine. I can get to know this guy. It'll be like, you know, 40 minutes in a nice car service, fine. I'll go ahead and take the ride because maybe, you know, we'll see. So I, we get off the airplane, we get into the car, we start to hit it off. 40 minutes, we're like hitting it off. He's like, wanna come back to, you know, the hotel with me, I'm standing, staying at the Mandarin Oriental, we'll just get a drink downstairs, don't worry, like nothing, no funny business. And I was like, okay, sounds good. We're like at the hotel bar, having a drink, doing all that. And he's like, you wanna come back up with me? And I was like, eh, I guess so, why not? And then um, we get upstairs, you know, we're like making out and stuff. The room is beautiful. He's staying in a beautiful room. It's one of those kinds of hotel rooms where there's like no real like separation between the bathroom. It's like too cool, right? Like bathroom, bedroom, bed here. Like there's only like glass doors that separate like a toilet stall. So we're making out and he tells me, he's like, just wait, just wait right there, I'll be right back. I just need to use the restroom. And I was like, okay, sounds good. I'm just waiting. You know, he's who told me to wait right there. I guess he's like in the toilet for a bit and I don't hear anything. Like you would think that you'd hear like at least some pee or something like that. And then suddenly I hear, <laughs> just like, <laughs> like this, like it just keeps going on and on. And I like sit up and I'm like, oh boy. And listen, listen. <laughs> I don't judge, but I didn't know the guy. It was already awkward that I had agreed to like go up to his room anyway. It just really killed the, the vibe. Like it wasn't romantic anymore. It didn't feel like this. that like moment of like, oh, this is like, just let's for fun, let's just keep doing it. Like that all like suddenly like it was real life. Like suddenly it was like not this magical New York City, like I'm in my twenties kind of moment. And it was like, I'm in some guy I don't know's hotel room. And he is like taking the most massive dump ever. <laughs> His tummy was probably like aching for who knows how long and he was playing it off, I give it to him because we were hitting it off, but suddenly it was just no longer romantic. I at least like was decent enough to be like, you know, I'll wait for a second and not just like peace out on him like this. So he comes out and this was like, I think the worst part about it is he comes out and he's like, so where were we? And I was like, oh God, no. So I was like, you know what, it's late, I gotta go. And he, he like totally understood. We did not at all acknowledge what had just happened. It went on for a little bit, by the way. Like it went on and on and on and on, like just kept going. And, um, and I left and you know, like I gave him a little kiss on the cheek. Thank you for the beautiful night. It was a fun New York City moment. That forever turned into like a story, Airplane Boy. My friends and I referred to him as Airplane Boy for years, so. There you go. I've got plenty of those stories. All right, this is actually, it says to leave on for 20 minutes, but this is really dry. I'm gonna answer one more question and just rinse this off. I thought I was gonna have this on for much longer. Next question is, what other career would you be doing if it wasn't what I'm doing right now? I think I'd be a housewife. <laughs> You know, I think I think I'm so exhausted lately that I like this the thought of doing like the opposite of what I'm doing right now. You know what I think it is when now that I've got kids and everything, I just I feel like they need me so much more, especially like with the start of school, with us moving, all of that. I don't know. I think I just like I think I'd be really happy being like a homemaker right now, like just decorating our house. I have not. I mean, this bathroom, I have all these ideas like, oh, this wallpaper and stuff. It's never going to happen because I don't have the time for it. I can't even decorate. I can't even like get returns done on furniture I have already, you know, um, purchased because I just don't have the time because I'm running businesses. I think I really crave spending more time with my kids. 
I miss cooking and baking as much as I used to. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so I, I don't know. I don't think I'd want to work right now. I think the pandemic did this to me. Do you guys feel this? Like it just, I don't know. I've been so exhausted and I feel like the last few years have just worn me out. And I just, I don't know, but it, I guess I feel very lucky that I get to do this as a career, you know, like I, that I get to just spend time with all of you, talk about things that I love, like skincare and beauty products and answer questions like this. And I don't know, it's really hard to beat this. All right, so I'm gonna take these off as much as it pains me to remove these, cause oh, I love them. Obviously took a little bit of the, don't mind this by the way. Yeah, that's my little pinky got shredded. Um, these are amazing. I'm gonna definitely buy more of these Dior eye patches just because they make you feel fancy. I like them. I wish I would have taken a picture. These are awesome. Okay, my skin feels nice. It's actually not very drying. I do have a little bit of a tingle after that. You know, I've obviously been using my retinoids at night. I've been exfoliating and stuff. So my skin maybe is a little sensitive right now. So noted that pore back gives you a little bit of a tingle tingly feeling afterwards, for me anyway. This is from Rode. This is a salted caramel, this is my favorite one. I like it. Gives a really pretty shine as well. I love the salted caramel. I tried the watermelon also in the regular. I feel like I need some hydration, so I'm gonna go in with this. I haven't ever tried this. This is from Paracone MD, High Potency Hyaluronic Intensive Hydrating Serum. Do you need this? No, you guys know I, I don't ever think you need to spend a lot of money on hyaluronic acid serums or anything, but this is, this is a niacinamide serum. So let's try it. How much is this? Deeply nourishing serum is designed with four forms and two, two natural building blocks of hyaluronic acid to instantly replenish essential moisture. Oh, it's $129. I don't know if I would say to you, you have to spend $129, but so this comes like this, maybe to keep it fresh, maybe so that this doesn't break since this is a glass bottle. Um, I hope this is great. I want this to be nice and cushiony and plush. Let's see. I think this is gonna feel very nice. Oh, it's an emulsion. I'm trying to get the word emulsion to be a thing because that's truly what it is. Ooh, it feels nice. This is like a, almost like a light lotion, an emulsion, like I said. Ooh, this feels good. Okay, I wouldn't call this a hyaluronic acid serum. They're, they're just like using hyaluronic because that's popular. I would call this just a really nice, hydrating, soothing serum. Mmm, this feels good. It almost feels like a lotion. Hmm, not what I was, oh, I like this. You know, I like the finish of this. It actually has foam formers or something without looking at the ingredient list. It dries down a lot more than you would think. I don't know how to explain this. I gotta give more thought to this. This is more interesting than I thought. People with oily skin might like this. It's not as like wet as you would think. The dry down and everything is not as wet. I'm gonna go in with vitamin C because you know, I love vitamin C. This is from Typology sent to me through PR. This is a French brand and this is their vitamin C 11%. They have sodium ascorbyl phosphate in here, which is a vitamin and see derivative and they also use propandiol so it gives it a little bit of a an oily feeling i don't know if i love that i feel like this will go well with this kind of a finish we shall see here's what it looks like kind of an orangey golden tone to it next question is do i expose my kids to indian culture it's like a long question and she's basically saying as an Indian, she's never like really seen me celebrate. Yes, first off, that, to answer the actual question, yes, they're exposed to it a lot. In fact, my in-laws did live closer to us in California than my own parents, because they're in Orange County. And when we were in Los Angeles, they got to see my kids a lot more than my parents in New Mexico. I'm gonna put a little bit more, surprisingly. I think I like this more than I expected to. It's not as oily as I thought it was gonna be. So yes. They're exposed to a lot of Indian culture. My husband's family is from Southern India. So some of the traditions are the same and some of them are a little bit different than what you would think of as like, you know, traditional Indian holidays. I don't know if that makes sense. But for the most part, yeah, we, we celebrate, you know, Indian holidays and my kids do have a lot of exposure to Indian culture and everything. I have not taken my kids to India. Pandemic put a little damper on that too. Oh, I like this. I feel like this is not where I thought this routine was gonna go. I thought it was gonna be real glowy right now, but I look like just very healthy, kind of matte, dare I say. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but everything I show with my kids a lot lately online, I go back and forth about my feelings of this, of like how much I show of my kids. 
So most of it's been very surface level. Like we're at a, you know, a park today or look at this cute face, you know, like that kind of thing. And I don't really talk about anything that's happening in their lives anymore just because I feel like it's personal for them. So I go very, I go back and forth on that because I love my kids so much and I'm so obsessed with them and I want to share them. And I think they're so cute. And then I'm like, the internet's a weird place. So I don't know, I go back and forth on it. But yes, they get lots of exposure. And in fact, Nikosh is, you know, one of his favorite things to eat is a uh, dosa. So, <laughs> so there you go. The next thing I'm gonna go in with is a moisturizer. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use a moisturizer with that hyaluronic intensive hydrating serum. I feel like I need one. I'm gonna go in with this from Good Light. This is the Order of the Eclipse Hyaluronic Cream. I'm excited to give this a try because I think it's gonna be a little bit lighter. They've got like squalane, glycerin, mushroom three forms of hyaluronic acid. What was it like to grow up half and half? Half Latina, half Asian. It kind of is a good question to come from that last one. And that's, you know, like when you grow up in a mixed culture family, you know, I think a lot obviously gets diluted. You like get so much exposure. Wow, this is actually thicker than I expected it to be. I thought this was gonna be a gel cream. This feels really nice. This is what my skin needed after those couple of products because they were nice products, don't get me wrong. But um, I needed the moisture. Ooh, this is good. Good light products, if you haven't tried any, I really don't have a product I don't like from them. But you know, when you grow up half and half, this is like its own video. You get so much exposure and then not, right? Like it's not concentrated exposure to cultural stuff. It's like touches of it and it's like your own perspective. It's like a different kind of perspective because you're treated differently from your own culture. When you have one parent who's a completely different culture than the other parent and you're living in one household and then you have kids, right? What you bring to the table is so rich in culture for your children, but slightly diluted in the importance of it because you're, instead of having like two people who think that this like one holiday is like super important, you have one who's like, this is a really important holiday. I'm gonna teach you about it, get our kids involved in it. And maybe my family members will bring us into it too. So you get this like rich cultural experience, but slightly diluted and vice versa, right? Like on the other side of things. So it's like, it's interesting because I feel like I got all these really cool cultural experiences. I have this like cool cultural identity. That's a very mixed identity, but at the same time, like a no identity, no cultural identity as well, if that makes sense. So that's what happens. This is nice, everyone. Good light, this moisturizer feels really good. I'm gonna let this dry down a little bit before I put on a sunscreen. Next question. Can you cook and would you ever start a cooking with season channel? I can cook. I think I'm a really good cook. And that's because I enjoy it. And because I enjoy it, I don't think I want to make it something that I put online too much. Like where I make it feel like it's a chore or like a duty or a work or something like that. Cooking to me has always been a way to like quiet my mind. I have a lot of anxiety and not in a bad way. I actually think that like the way I am really helps me get so much done because I'm so intense about doing things. And I'm like that with cooking too. Like when I cook, I'm focused on cooking and I compartmentalize a lot. It's hard for me to break away from what I'm doing because I just compartmentalize. And so if I were to like now start cooking to share and make it look pretty and everything, I don't know if it would be so much fun to me anymore. I'm a good cook. I think I like it to be for me and for like my friends and people who I like share that with. I'm gonna go in with this from Ula Henriksen. It's the Banana Bright Plus Eye Cream. So next question is, why did you stop, they said my personal videos, but my personal YouTube channel basically. Ooh, this is, you know, I really liked the original version of this. I don't know if you guys remember me talking about it like back in the day when it came out. I really like this. I like the color it gives you and everything. They updated it a little bit. It's got a gold complex vitamin C. Do you guys recognize that from the Naturium? Vitamin C complex serum is starting to get popular suddenly. That ingredient that everybody doesn't seem to remember. I remember like just two and a half years ago, people saying that that was a sham and now it's like in so many different products and brands. Ooh, this is pretty. I like this. I stopped it, yes. I'm not talking about my kids as much. Though I do want to share some things like Isla's first haircut, like those things. Cause in a lot of ways I was doing that channel because it gives me memories also. Like these are memories that me and my kids will be able to have in the future. I think I like this better than the original one. It doesn't give as much of like a shine, like a pretty, you know, base under your makeup, you know, but it's nice. 
Maybe it's like more efficacious. I like this. I stopped it because I just don't have the time. I started to feel like I was being pulled in two different directions and I kind of didn't know where I want that channel to go. I'll keep that channel for sure. I might start doing some home content. Maybe like it's like the process of putting this house together that we moved into or something like that. I don't know. Short answer is I just don't have the time to keep two channels running and then have all the other social media apps going as well because they just require so much more of your attention on purpose, like all these apps are competing for everyone's attention and for everyone to be utilizing all of the things that they have on these apps, like their stories, their reels, their TikToks, their, you know, like there's just so many things that these apps want you to do to be able to like stay relevant. It's just made me too busy with everything happening. So I have to cut out some things. Like you'll never succeed at some of the most important things if you don't cut some other stuff out. So I cut that out for now, but maybe it'll come back. So we'll see. All right, next sunscreen i chose this one from summer fridays the shade drops broad spectrum spf 30 mineral milk sunscreen i've seen some really good reviews of this i just pulled this out i've been wanting to try it because it looks really cool i wish it was spf 50 you guys know i just feel that way my melasma all of that stuff especially the reason why i would choose a mineral sunscreen but everyone says that this is a really nice texture so i'm excited to give it a try enriched with vitamins antioxidants and soothing chamomile um, soft finish. That's the reason why I chose it also, is because I thought I was gonna be really glowy and I'm gonna be outside in a little bit. It's hot, it's humid, and this is like a soft matte kind of finish. Let me show you. Oh yeah, oh. It has like a tint to it. I don't think it'll be a problem on my skin tone. That's nice. Somebody asked, do I make a lot of money as an influencer? Yes. Yes, I do. I bought this house with my influencer money. Thank you very much. I don't know what else to say about that. That's like a funny question, but I do. Yeah, I, I, I make really good money. I do want to point out though, it took a while to get to the point where I was making a lot of money and there were a couple of times where I thought I was going to stop. I think the influencer industry and how you make money has completely changed in the last couple of years because when I first started, you could not get brands to sponsor anything like it was so hard you had to be such a massive influencer to get a brand to sponsor you back in the day that it was like near impossible but now i feel like you can be and sometimes it's even better for somebody who is a small like a micro influencer i feel like there are so many opportunities now like with user generated content and all of that stuff those were not possibilities for me when i started and so you know it's just influencer marketing is the main form of marketing these days i feel like and so there's just so many more opportunities to make money, but it was not like this. Even just like a few years ago, like four years ago, I was obviously starting to see that this was gonna be a real career, making real money, like good money. But I'll tell you before that, it felt like we were working real hard, working upstream, and we weren't sure if this was gonna be worth it. So I'm glad it worked out, I'm glad it panned out. And yes, now I make a lot of money, but it was a lot of hard work and a lot of broke moments. <laughs> I really like the finish of this sunscreen. I am not giving you any reviews of things. These are just like first impressions. I really like the finish. I'm curious how this is gonna hold up outside where it's hot and humid, but I like this finish. Underneath all that, like all those products and stuff, it actually has a nice glowy finish, but not super, super, super glowy, which I like super glowy too. For a mineral sunscreen, it's nice. Let's go in with foundation. And the next question is a tough one. What age did I start loving the way I look and what caused the shift? You know, like I think we have, I constantly have issues with myself, right? Like you guys see, I'm constantly doing things where I'm like, oh God, I need to fix this and I need to tweak that. I, you know, I got into an industry where I constantly am like trying to, I guess like in, in a lot of ways, like maintain and, and fix and like tweak and do all of that, right? Like I started this channel with lots of cosmetic treatments, but I would say I'm really confident and really comfortable, I guess, now. I think that started to happen. You know, when I became a mom, I had to really sit with myself and be, be very like happy with who I am because when you don't have kids, you're selfish and not in a bad way. Like it's your whole world is about you. And when you have kids, your whole world becomes about them. And so your focus on yourself shifts a lot. And also with age, I feel like you just become so much more confident. You don't give a shit, right? I think that happens. It's so hard for me to do my makeup and talk at the same time, by the way. I've got two shades. This is from Milk. That's their Flex Foundation Stick. This is Golden Nude that I'm gonna try out. I actually think this is the shade for me. Oh, a little. That's too yellow for you, Susan. This, that was 
Let's see, this is sand. I think this is gonna be too dark. Oh, no, sand might be the color. Let's see, no, sand is too dark. No, sand is the color. Sand is the color. Okay, I'm gonna go with sand. Next question, do I miss LA? Ooh, a bit chunky. I miss LA all the time, but if I'm being honest, it just still feels like I live there because I spend so much time working out of my house now. I don't have an office to go to and that I miss terribly. I miss being with my team. I'm with them online almost all day, but it just isn't the same. So I try to spend some time out there for sure. So it, it helps to not miss it, but I miss LA. LA is its own special place, right? Don't get me wrong. It has its things, its issues, but I also do love LA and it has a special place in my heart, so of course I miss it. And I mostly miss my team and my friends and my family and everybody who is out there. This is a little chunky, guys. It's not as like soft as I thought it was gonna be. But the coverage is nice. How am I managing to run Notorium and Mixed Makeup since moving to Miami? You know, I luckily, Mixed Makeup especially, I have been with my team for so long the mixed makeup team. I mean, Anna is actually here, so, you know, like, there's a lot of privilege here happening, too, where I get to, like, fly, I get to have my team fly around with me, all of that. So it's actually working out really well. You know, I wish I could spend more time with the Naturium team in person because there are a lot of newer people. But like I said, I'm online with them so much during the day that I feel like it's it's going well. If you don't know, Naturium has grown so quickly. I had to hire like a whole executive team. I had to bring on more people to just keep the whole business going. And they're doing such a good job that I get to focus really on the things that I love the most. That's the innovation side, all the product development, and also the marketing side of things. That's like, that's what I do the best, you know? So the fact that I get to focus on that is really exciting. Distribution, you know, like getting our brand into different countries, that's a big focus, right? We'll be in the UK soon. That's exciting, Europe. Anna's saying there's a lot of questions about Naturium launching in the UK. It will be launching in the UK very soon. Stay tuned to Instagram, because that's where like, the main announcements are gonna be coming very, very soon. And yes, with the UK means EU and Canada, don't worry, we are thinking about you, I promise. Let's see, okay, that was a lot of work, but I actually do like the finish so far. What do you guys think? Sand, sand is never my color, and sand is working out for me. Next question, this is a little bit of a juicy one. Did you get your nose done? Yes, I did, I did, and I think a lot of people noticed. I tweaked my nose and I have lots of thoughts of it, but it's actually too new. Like it's still swollen and I still have like another six months of it being swollen that I want to form an opinion and then I will tell you guys all about it because I've had lots of, I feel like there are a lot of things with plastic surgery that people don't talk about and I have thoughts, but yes, I did. I did. I used to do filler in my nose occasionally and one day my dermatologist was like, I refuse to do this anymore. <laughs> this is not safe. If you are getting filler in your nose this often, you need a nose job. So I did it. I did it. And I have thoughts. I'll tell you guys more about it. It's a whole different video. But probably not for like another six months. I want, I want full healing before I really talk about it. All right, next. I always start with a cream bronzer. This is from NARS. This is their Laguna Original Bronzing Cream. I'm excited about this because I just touched it. And I was like, oh God, I gotta put it in this video. I love a bronzing cream and I'm excited to see what this looks like. Let's see. Oh, I love Laguna just like the normal powder shade. So I was excited about this. Will Naturium have a sunscreen? And will it smell like green chili? That was another question. I know that had to be from a friend of mine. I'm actually gonna guess that it's gonna be, it was like my friend Ana who's in New Mexico. She's like one of my high school friends and we've like stayed in contact. Anyway, no, it will not smell like green chili. Yes, we have sunscreen. We have more than one sunscreen coming. And there have been so many things that have delayed the launch of the sunscreens just because sunscreen is very difficult to create if you want to do anything that's like cool. So we've been working really hard on these sunscreens. So I just took my hair down because I was having a hard time like picturing my face. I actually think I'm gonna take all my hair clips out now because I'm not doing my skincare anymore. I'm liking this color. It's a little bit darker than I expected it to be because with Laguna, the bronzer, I feel like you have to put a lot to get like a lot of pigment. Sunscreen is coming. More than one sunscreen. I guess that's all I'm gonna say. You'll see, it's like soon. 
soon, soon. It's like, it's been soon. We've had sunscreen ready to go and then just not ready to go. There's so many things to explain that I, I just, ugh. There is sunscreen coming this year. How about that? Sunscreen is coming this year. Wait, what do we think about this? Something pilled up a little bit and I don't know what it was, but I'm getting like some little flakies. Do you guys see that? Something. Next thing is Bay Brow. I've never tried this. They sent this to me. This is the Instant Eyebrow Tint. I don't even know what shade this is. I haven't opened it, but. Oh, wait, that's not what I was expecting. I might regret wait, this. this isn't the dye, is it? Is like, it the dye? Come in a set? No. Wait a second. It's a tint. Okay, just kidding. Maybe this is not what I'm using right now. Okay, so luckily Anna stopped me because I was about to put brow dye on. This is from e.l.f. This is soap brow. This is clear. I have not heard anything about this one. So I'm gonna open it. I actually bought this myself just because I was trying to desperately find my favorite brow gel and I actually like the one from Bay Brow, which is why I was gonna try that other one, but let's see. I'm just gonna, oh, oh, that is not, wait, is this dampen brush head? Ugh. Dampen this so it's not soft like I thought it was gonna be this is truly like soap brows Oh, you gotta treat this like a true soap brow. Okay. Did I put too much? Let's see. What's the next question Anna? Um, do you answer the questions or does your staff? Do I answer the questions? I'm assuming like direct for messages. direct messages. Okay um, for Naturium, right? Yeah, well they didn't specify, but I'm assuming we're gonna assume it's Naturium questions. I do not actually I have hired a pretty great team on the customer service side, including Tom, if you guys were in my Facebook group, one of our moderators, Tom, used to be in that group. Um, I wet this way too much, by the way. My brows are not going how I expected. Do you see all that water build up right there? <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix this. So too much water noted. I'm gonna have to fix that side. I do not answer the questions personally. I used to every now and then. We would all take turns, but now I do not. I do answer my own DMs, my own personal DMs all the time. I don't have anybody answering those for me. And I just feel like that's a better way to go. But everyone is very well trained. They know the products very well. And hopefully they provide you with like the best assistance ever. And if they don't, send me a message. Cause I pay attention. I do, I pay attention. They know we are high quality here. So, oh my gosh, you guys, this is all going downhill. <laughs> maybe, maybe I need to not do this into a camera on a phone. Oof. Okay, we're gonna let this dry down and I'll figure out how I'm gonna fix my brows. We're gonna let these dry like this. I'm not gonna leave them like this. I don't know if I how I feel about this stuff, okay? Again, first impressions, not certain. All right, I think I have salvaged my brows. I know they're a little intense, but they're gonna come down. I want them to look bushy. I can fix them a little bit later, but I think I salvaged them. I think I got them even. I'm gonna go in with eyeshadow. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. Prime Prepare S Enhance Smoke. Oh, there's three shades? Oh. Oh, I like this. Wait, I like this concept. Look at this, so they have like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So basically there's four different palettes in here that you can use to prep, prime, and enhance. Let's see which one I'm gonna do. Oh, I like this concept. Oh, they're trying to tell you also, like, if this just is gonna be like a daytime look, if this is gonna be a desk look, a date look, or a dream look. Oh, I think I'm gonna go with desk. No, maybe I'm gonna go with day look. Desk or day? I'm going with this golden color. I'm going to prime my whole lid. Look at that, ooh, that's pretty. This is pretty, sorry, I forgot I was answering questions, you guys, I got caught up in this. Someone wants daycare and school recommendations in Los Angeles. So, my kids went to Piper, LA. There are two locations as of now, I think, in Los Angeles for Piper. We did not go to the Santa Monica location, we went to the LA location. I don't really have a lot of context into or perspective, I guess, into if it was a good or bad preschool, but I will say that my children had a really good experience with the teachers. You know, I think that like every school during the pandemic had their issues, right? That they were trying to work through. So there's that. I especially loved the families that we were potting with because we, you know, we're basically potting the whole time. And when I say pod, I mean like 
We basically stayed with one class, like one group of people for years because of the pandemic. So that made our kids get really close and we became close as parents as well, which was like a nice surprise because I didn't expect to become so close with parents, I guess, at, at preschool. So that was a really nice surprise. My daughter also went to a place that we used to send Nikosh there just for like some of the daytime activities and stuff when he was a toddler called Chiki. So if you haven't heard of Chiki, it's like a Spanish immersion preschool. It's so cool. I love Lizette, the owner. I feel like it's more of a personalized experience. If she has openings, I highly recommend it. Your kids do not have to be Latino, but if you want them to be exposed to Spanish language, it's so fun. It is such a fun, cute environment, and I highly recommend that one too. All right, so I'm having a hard time finishing my makeup because and talking. I have the hardest time doing that. This is why you guys don't see too many get ready with me. So I'm gonna try this Laura Geller really quick. Kajal Long Wear Eyeliner in Smoky Taupe. Oh, it's thicker than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I'm gonna probably do all of this off camera. I'm gonna finish the look and I'll be right back, okay? This did not come out how I wanted it. I fixed it a little bit. Probably doesn't look as bad on camera. That eyeliner I was using, so it's so soft. Not necessarily saying it's a bad eyeliner, but it was so soft it got onto my bottom line and I almost never put liner on my bottom. So it's throwing me off a little bit. I'm gonna do my lipstick. Um, this is from NARS, it's a little collection. How did I overcome doubts? You know, I, really believe most of the time our doubts come from ourselves, right? Like obviously, but like we actually create all of this in our minds because of our experiences and our, you know, we've been taught to feel shame or whatever it is, right? And I think once I start to realize that no one can tell me or stop me if I know what I'm doing, if I prove myself, if I like for instance, learn how to do something and then go try to do it, and I do it really well and I get really good at it. How can anyone tell me that I'm not good at that, right? Like, so I, I always made sure to really educate myself, get experience in things, spend time. I, I did a lot of things like that. I really truly believe, like, you know, for instance, when I became a news reporter, before I actually became a news reporter, I remember being an intern and one of my mentors saying to me, you know, learn every job in the newsroom. That way, when you are a news reporter, you know, when you ask somebody to like, you know, find some information for you or get a video shot or something like that. When you learn as many of those roles and know how to do them, if they tell you they don't, they can't do it or it's like impossible, you can turn around and be like, do you want me to do that for you? And I think that's so true. And so I always just made sure that I really knew what I was doing and like could show. Like I feel like it's also inspiring to those who work with you if you can teach, right? And like show them that you know what you're doing and you know what's, where it's gonna go and it gives you this confidence that you know this is going to work. There's just so much more to it, but that's kind of like the easiest way. Uh, you guys, my makeup didn't come out the way I wanted it to. My hair is a big puff and I gotta finish. Uh, this is why I don't switch what I do. This is why this is why we stick with like the same makeup products and stuff is because we just, we know, we like knowing what we're gonna get, right? This is my frizzy hair and the humidity here. I'm gonna go try to smooth it out. Tweak my makeup a little bit. I'm so glad you guys spent this time with me. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Find me on Instagram, at Susan Yara. I'll talk to you guys soon and welcome to my new bathroom.